Okay, so what we have here is one of the more difficult A2 Unit 3 questions. Um, the question is as follows. In large private sector organisations such as McDonald's and Adidas, there is inevitably a separation between those who own the organisation and those who control it. Discuss how this divorce of ownership from control might influence the objectives of large private sector organizations okay so I this is a really tricky one because um, I think this is really tricky actually um, mainly because there's no clear paragraphing or clear structure that comes to mind with this it's not saying evaluate reasons or you know evaluate the significance there's no yes or no here it's just kind of um, trying to discuss uh, different cases where you might have an influence on objectives so let's take a couple of minutes to really understand what this question is asking us so obviously it's split into two here so we've got the prompt the kind of extract little um, mini mini extract there and then we've got the actual question itself okay so let's start with this prompt up here so um, the first thing you should recognize is any key words that you know that you have to pay attention to if you ignore any part of the question you are not going to get into the top band okay so you you must make sure that you're not ignoring any single part of it. So what I mean here is obviously it's saying large private sector. So that's gonna be very, very important that you understand it's large private sector. Obviously the difference in operation of a small private sector and a large private sector firm are very different. A publicly traded company is going to have a different um, owner from manager most likely, whereas in the case of a sole trader, the owner is the manager and you know they run the business themselves. So you can understand why they've clearly stated that there so that's just something to have in the back of your head maybe you don't have to define it but you do have to understand they're trying to steer you away from sole trader toward more like uh, publicly traded or private limited companies um, so you know they do give you clues in the um, question wording itself so do pay attention to that we're saying such as mcdonald's and adidas that's just confirming you know we're looking at publicly we're essentially looking at publicly traded firms here and then they're saying there is inevitably a separation. So we're basically saying there is a separation. So basically understand it to be the main, the kind of first side of the argument is going to be there is a separation between the owners and the people who run it. So uh, what does, what, what kind of, uh, what does that do to our objectives? Okay. So we're basically saying what, um, how do objectives change? Yeah. Or do they change? Okay. Yeah. Do they have to change? So that is the kind of overall feeling we're getting here. So um, break it down into these kind of manageable bites of uh, uh, information, okay? So we're basically saying, what are the different objectives and how might they be different according to if there is a separation or if there isn't? Because obviously they have said inevitably a separation. That means you can discuss the case in which there is no separation, okay? So let me take you through the structure that I've used, um, which may not be the best one. You might find something better than use that, you know, but um, this is just kind of um, a guidance in case you're completely stuck on what to do here. So in the introduction, as I said, there's no clearly like, clear yes or no to this. So there's no need to, to, to really answer the question in this section, I, th I personally think. When it is a discuss how type question, I don't think you necessarily need to give an answer in the intro. You can just give a judgment at the end. So anyway, so in the introduction, I've just made sure that we've uh, defined any, cleared up any key terms that we are going to be uh, using without um, defining again. So anything where you're just going to, from now this point on, we're just going to take it as given, then you have to define in the in the intro, okay? So private sector firms, and then um, I've listed out the different potential objectives that could occur, and then also understanding immediately, we're saying that the shareholders of the, of the business are those who own the organization, and then the managers are those who make daily operating decisions. Now that is really, that's really important, I think, to identify those groups immediately um, because you need to have a subject when you're talking about this stuff. You can't keep repeating, you know, a divorce of ownership, you know, you have to clearly identify who you, it is so you can critically evaluate it. The way that I've basically structured this is to give a main answer to the question, which I'll explain what, I, what that is in a second, and then to basically just have further considerations or evaluating different cases, basically. So what I mean by main answer to the question is, we're basically saying, how do objectives change? You know, the divorce of ownership from control does change the objectives. So we're basically looking at the most um, important or the most significant, the most common uh, objective difference between the two groups. And that 
happens to be profit maximization versus sales maximization or growth, okay? So what I've, so that shareholders, of course, are going to want to maximize profits, okay? And that is because they collect dividends and then obviously uh, the profitability also determines the value of the outstanding stock amount that they hold. And then on the other side, managers, they would usually collect a bonus or collect a uh, additional compensation as a result of how much the company has grown or hitting certain sales targets or building their brand up. So that is the first kind of conflict you would talk about between the two, okay? So uh, what I've done here, I've said I've answered the uh, question very simply. I've said private sector firms will most often choose to profit maximize. And then here, which I've discussed in previous uh, essay questions, but you have to incorporate the diagram. If you don't incorporate the diagram, there's no point even including a diagram, okay? So if you just put one in the middle between your two essay, uh, two paragraphs or whatever, then that is gonna get you genuinely about one or two extra kind of analysis marks, but not, not much more than that. So you really do have to incorporate them in. So um, this is a nice, easy way to do it. You just call, uh, label your diagram figure one, and then on there, you are just describing what is being shown on that diagram. So in this case, I've shown the profit maximizing quantity and price. Do remember, it's profit maximizing quantity, okay? It's, it's, it's not like some random point, yeah? Okay, so this maximizes the level of profit which can be earned to satisfy the shareholders of the business who will be able to collect dividends based off profit level. Okay, so that's my basic kind of linkage there. So why do we want to profit maximize? Just shareholders. And then McDonald's and Adidas are publicly traded companies and as such, their valuation will depend upon the profitability of the firm. It is in the owner's favor to maximize profit. So this section here is basically saying, yes, firms, private sector organization will want to profit maximize from the shareholder, the owner point of view. Now let's look at the manager point of view, okay? So now we're kind of starting to answer the question a little bit more. So here's my sort of in, intermediary uh, sentence here. So however, due to the divorce of ownership and control of these firms, the actual quantity and price set may differ, okay? So you see what I, uh, another thing to bring to your attention is the objective is all about the quantity and price set, okay? You could, it's, it's not necessarily, um, important what the actual um, objective is is it does it result in different prices and output yeah so uh, now I'm explaining the manager side so they're likely to pursue sales maximization because of the you know bonuses sales target etc and then uh, so that's the general explanation and then again referring back to the diagram, okay? So we are describing on the same diagram, of course show this on the same diagram just to be efficient about it, but we can see on figure one, there is a lower price uh, P2 alongside higher quantity Q2 compared to the profit maximizing quantity it should be, okay? Um, so that's the kind of basic main answer to the question. Yes, there will be a difference. There will be an influence on objectives because of uh, the difference in running and owning. Um, I've just put another kind of further analysis point here just to kind of bulk up the paragraph a little bit and also because, you know, it's, it's quite an interesting case to consider. Um, so both McDonald's and Adidas, they are in oligopolistic industries. So McDonald's, obviously, fast food industry or, yep, casual dining industry. Adidas in the um, sporting, like, you know, I'd say high street sports, maybe kind of higher end of that, but somewhere in that kind of affordable um, affordable luxury of sports sports, but that is obviously an oligopoly as well. So in oligopoly markets, we have an understanding that there are high levels of price and non-price competition. Um, and so one of the ways they can um, compete and gain market share and therefore build brand is by setting the price slightly lower, gaining market share. So this again supports our point that managers will most likely want to actually uh, sales maximize or focus on growth um, because when the brand is stronger the managers also will get prestige they will be more likely to be headhunted for other jobs or they will gain um, credibility inside the firm you know don't don't this is don't be afraid to use your sort of um, everyday uh, common sense logic okay so this this part here, it's um, just basically developing our point further. So what I, the reason I've set that separately and what I want to suggest to you is that 
Don't try and shove all of this basically into the main bulk of the answer because you want to really keep your answer as simple as possible in, in, in theory, okay? So if you're saying shareholders want to maximize profit, we want to say managers want to maximize sales and give simple reasons, but well developed for both, you know, explaining really clearly step by step by step. The, the, the biggest mistake, well, not one of the mistakes I see a lot in um, students' essays is basically they try to explain too much in too short of a of a, of a paragraph or an explanation. And that's what leads your writing to sound very confused, very, um, uh, it's, not, it's not very, um, what do you call it? it? It doesn't lead on nicely, basically. It's really hard to, to kind of keep track of what's going on. If the examiner has to read through your writing uh, once and then again and then again to understand, that's not good, okay? So practice that with your own writing as well. If you are struggling to understand what is going on the first read through, then you need to change your writing style a little bit, okay? Does, you sacrifice some fancy grammatical structures in order to make it more uh, easier to understand, okay? This is this is not in a writing competition. This is uh, an exercise in trying to answer a question well. So, okay, that's uh, that's just that. Anyway, um, so that's why I've split um, my second kind of analysis point, which I could have included in here to because it's the same thing, isn't it? Still arguing about sales maximization, but I've split it for that for that reason. Okay. Okay, so that would be my main answer. So I've already kind of you know got a got a answered the question and uh, you know told the examiner I know what's going on here. Now, how do you do the rest of it? Because what the fear is that you go basically start evaluating the evaluation. Another mistake I see all the time is that you kind of forget what the question is up here. And then people will say, you know, however, something, something, something. And then you, however, however. So that, you be really, really careful about that. That is a really easy mistake to make. So um, I have got evaluation directly of this main paragraph. So what I've put here is, uh, because we've argued, okay, the the owner will want sh uh, profit max and they'll want sales max managers. Now, I'm, uh, as evaluation, I'm basically saying, no, they'll want the same thing. Okay, so here I've said, shareholders may agree with managers to sales maximize if they have invested to the firm at an early stage. Um, so this is in the case that shareholders will agree with um, basically, uh, uh, the managers because obviously with firms such as you know um, startups uh, uber does it count as a startup anymore but um, you know these firms that are not necessarily profitable right now and they don't need to be pro profitable right now as they as long as they will be in the long run and people don't necessarily hold on to those assets in order to collect dividends that's more for established mature companies that you would expect to see dividends so in recognition of that we have to say okay you know what it's not even true that shareholders always want to profit maximize obviously most some of the time they just want to grow as much as possible in order to see their um, stock price go right up okay so that is just uh an example of how you might evaluate that. And then um, I've linked it back to the question. Very, very important. As you know, I'm always going on about it, but I've just answered, hence the divorce of ownership and control does not need to le lead to difference in objectives. Okay. So we are giving a really comprehensive answer to begin with. The rest of the essay, I haven't fully written it out, but I've just got some ideas in here. So paragraph two, uh, an important thing to discuss would be that managers, we've discussed shareholders may have the same goal as managers, but what about managers having the same goal as shareholders? So a really common uh, way to provide compensation to employees these days by firms is to uh, offer managers ownership or some partial ownership in the firm by offering them shares as part of their compensation package. And in doing so, what you're doing is you're aligning the objectives of managers and shareholders. So uh, in this case, there is, as I've said here, there would be no issue of difference in objective setting, no issue whatsoever. And I've just explained it. As managers now share in the profits, they would should choose to profit maximize. Do you see how simple the sentences I'm writing here are? They are no works of art. You know, they're just really basic, but they're explaining well. They're kind of explaining simply and well, comprehensively. Yeah. So you know, don't don't try to don't try to get too complex with it. All right, so furthermore, the type of private firm here will be crucial in understanding which objective is chosen. So I found here, basically, I was struggling to kind of develop this further. I mean, what more can you say here? I was considering uh, putting in an example. So, you know, if you know some data off the top of your head about how 
you know, Amazon offers share how much or how many shares when you first join or something like that, then feel free to put it in if you feel like you haven't explained your point enough. But I just didn't know an actual data, so piece of data. So I just didn't bother. What I've done instead is I've um, considered another case of uh, when we might have difference in objective settings. So um, the type of private firm. So in this case, a cooperative, obviously a cooperative, they are owned, operated, and the services are consumed by the same group. That's if it's a pure consumer cooperative, obviously those don't tend to be super large scale. So I'm taking a bit of a liberty here, but I have included an example here. There is no divorce of ownership and control in this type of organization. The cooperative group in the UK, you know, each of their members, which tend to be users of the group as well, and the managers and the owners, they all have equal decision making. Well, they all have one vote a piece. So in that sense, their objective would kind of be decided together. And in the case of a co-op, it's likely to be toward, you know, high quality products, you know, good relationships with suppliers. You could expand that and develop that point if you wanted to. OK, so that was my paragraph two. In my paragraph three, I've suggested that you talk about nonprofit organizations. So obviously nonprofits, because if you go back to the intro, I'm basically covering uh, all the objective points. Uh, satisfy saying I haven't, but, you know, you could, you don't have to. Um, anyway, so nonprofit organizations, they are going to have goals that are uh, less to do with profit or money or growth. It's going to be to do with um, social objectives. So they're providing humanitarian um, services or whatever it is. So then the objectives here are determined by what the firm is doing rather than who owns or operates, or it should be anyway. Um, so another, again, maybe an example in here, maybe you could discuss that um, they also tend to run off donations and things, so they don't actually need to make profit, so it's not really in their radar. And then paragraph four, um, short run versus long run. So in the long run, all private sector firms are profit maximizing. You can assume that, okay, you can say that. Uh, and then the short term objectives may always differ, but at the end of the day, all firms tend to be profit maximizing. So just some examples of what the short term objectives might be. So predatory or limit pricing in the short run, push out rivals, especially Adidas and McDonald's, you know, they, they are oligopolies. We kind of discussed it above, but here you can actually go into deeper development. You could even chuck in a diagram you could do a short run and long run uh diagram actually case um of of the differences and maybe even look at perfectly competitive markets maybe but um no no sorry you can't do that sorry large private sector firm almost forgot there okay and then focus on growing franchises so here again in the short run mcdonald's wants to build a brand you know they're expanding internationally i mean they have expanded internationally of course um so you can say in the in the short run they were focused on getting their brand out there everywhere now maybe they are focusing more on profit um international brand building by adidas as well so you want to be globally recognized obviously that builds a competitive advantage etc so um, and then conclusion, of course, your all you have to say here is that um, you know the uh, divorce of ownership and control does influence objectives of large private sector organisations, and it depends upon the type of firm, the age of the firm, and the industry, or something like that. Okay, so. Um, because there's, as I said, no yes or no, no most significant, you just kind of cap it off by saying, yes, there is a, an influence, okay? Um, there is an influence on objective. Okay, so uh, you can see that this type of essay, compared to the ones that I've discussed before, it's really unclear how you should be structuring this. And, uh, you know, the, especially for these essays, the mark schemes are so unhelpful because obviously they just suggest ideas, but it doesn't, it doesn't help you to build a kind of overall picture. So I do hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have any kind of better structures or ideas, um, you know, just go with that, I would say. Um, obviously, just recognize that at the end of every paragraph still, you must link back to the question. You know, those rules do not change. Um, but those are the same as the other other essay questions. But the only difference here is like, you know, um, be, it's more consideration and discussion of different cases rather than trying to prove or, uh, you know, compel the reader to agree with your stance, you know? Okay, um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. And um, yeah, have a go at writing it, I would say. <laughs>